They taught you that they were good and you trusted them. They waxed victories with their thousand tongues and sang honor with their branching throats and you trusted them. You were taught to love them and when reality came knocking on the door, you greeted him in and asked him to explain. Your country has no free speech, it's corrupt. So you protested and organized in hope. They also did the guns and tanks and arrests and you were only kids and they turned a blind eye. So something broke and this country was not home, was not home, was not home. No more, they say direct control. No more sovereignty, no more worshipping, no more empires. Indirect control. Puppeteering the government to say no more children, no more unity, no more allies that are not us. Which is worse? The one where they rule us, but openly, or the one where they play savior to the myth and problems they created? Violence is nothing new. 2611 still rings true, and they hide behind NGOs or the UN offering safety and protection, disguising that they are the ones who endanger us. Run from home to our savior, changing papers, nationality, identity, returning their direct control for our presumed prosperity, our raksha, even though just moments ago, we were screaming no more. It's always a binary. Are you conservative or liberal? A binary that internally displaced masses. A binary that forced you to leave your hometown because if you stayed, it would mean ostracism, threats, and even death. It's generational. Your children experience this violent binary too. It dictates fear and insecurity. Who is sending you threats this time? The political war or the drug war? Is it the guerrilleros or the paracos? Is it el cartel or your own government? Political threats, political violence, political asylum. How can a country survive while simultaneously fighting multiple wars? Parampara prides itself on being rigid. The top loads to let go, relinquish the privilege, the power that comes with being the Raj. The caste unity, class unity coagulated into something superseding national unity, ethnic unity. Staying on top became a priori history and country left in the dust. The same hierarchy prevails, morphing a paradise into a prison for those who cannot pay the wardens to get out. Those who do get out were never imprisoned to begin with. As if your grandparents were not internally displaced, as if your parents were not forced to flee the country. Leave and come back, leave once again and come back again, una y otra vez más. Now you are back in the homeland, back in the country with your ancestral ties. Or is it as if generations of migration was not enough? Here you are again and you live in a country aggressively growing with classism, racism, political persecution, homophobia, transphobia, corruption and machismo. These are the remains of colonization and imperialism. Now it is your rite of passage, your turn to flee. You leave for opportunities, for equity, for a chance to live. You cannot go higher because you do not have a good family. You watch your coworker work half as hard and get promoted twice as fast. His family knows the company, they are friends. Relationships, guanxi, these are the things you just don't have. Barriers of glass and shame, you run up against it again and again. Your fingers know how solid it feels. And yet, you watch others stroll straight through, so leave. Go to where you can claim your own, a land of its own glass walls yet unfelt. At least it's different, at least there's hope for more. The thin bridal veil does little to hide the pushing, pulling, and twisting that made marriage a prerequisite for mobility. Anatomy determines acceptance and opportunity, subtle hints about safety, respectability. The message is clear. Women are not to be out in this world alone. Captivity to the East India Company resulted in the Raj, not just of the British, but of Native men, with the women say once plenty prevalent, now non-existent. The myth of a backward country allowed Queen Victoria to be a hero. The women of the Indian Peninsula, the collateral. When your mother came here, my heart finally settled. This land was finally home, my father says. But what does it mean to live in a country that once called all Chinese women prostitutes and locked her passage with law? Railroads built in blood, sweat, tears, while Jia was pulled out by the roots, our history bleached from the books. When my parents arrived, they called them newcomers. I laugh. My mother tells them she comes here for her husband, and so they let her through. 
but she never did do this for him, for only his home, and soon enough, she has the American dream by the throat, and she doesn't let go. In a world where machismo penetrates all areas of life, there is only one solution. Escape and hope for the better. The single mother will take her two toddlers and hope for the better, hope for the better, hope for the better, but the better never came. A blow in the head, a push towards the wall, a suffocating breath. It's all the violence all again. Who to call for help? The chains that asphyxiate are made of fear of deportation. Once again, there is only one solution. Escape and hope for the better. But who? Who is going to help la abuela, la tía, la mamá, la niña, la vecina, la comadre? Escape and hope for the better. Orders are locked with money. Give them enough and they creak open just for you. Beyond is a golden land of jobs and education. Give them money and you, too, can fight for prosperity in a land of dreams. Pay them for your future where you work more in a language you don't know, in a place where everyone is nice but no one is close. You need money to go. You need money to stay. The jobs you dream of are built on lies, exploitation, abuse. But you've already lost so much, so you take the fruit you paid, paid, paid for here. Your crown seeped in blood. You place it on your head and look at your new home. The blood in your eyes makes everything tinted pink. Where is your job? Not here, not there, not anywhere. If you don't know where to go, look to the north, al sueño americano. Cross the so-called borders and get to the promised land. Here you will find plenty of jobs, plenty of prosperity, and one might even hope for economic stability. But once you get there, you begin to see. It is not about the country you live in, but the system that was built. It is the sun beating down on farm workers. It is the harassment of domestic workers. It is the untold deaths of factory workers. It is the abuse by employers and those deathly, deathly silences. Rat race. That's what they call it. The need to get ahead, beat those before you, run yourself ragged for grandstanding, sacrifice well-being for wealth. Also culture. People are praised for working hard and persevering, innovating, engaging, listening, putting their head down, and pretending. My parents crossed oceans for this. Even so, they're working hard and persevering, innovating, engaging, listening, putting their head down, and pretending was not something to be admired. No. They were vilified for language and laughter, for daring to live when not from here, for tearing to take from those whose birthright it was to win the American rat race. For the race could never be the problem. No, it must be the competition. Thief hides behind a mask of trade. Allow us in and we'll give you prosperity. Open up, open up, open this door. Your methods are foolish, your people are starving, so let us in and we will fix it. Give us your money and we will teach you what the prosperous do. Lesson one. Everything and anything can be used, can be sold. Land, labor, air, culture, people. Lesson two. Steal. Take and take and give little back. Only the strong and privileged survive. Lesson three. Sell back to them what was already theirs. Make them think they are lacking this in the first place. Take their money and build your throne higher and higher, and then you will be like us, child. Small thing of ancient histories and grand sovereignty. Then you will be like us. The mark of thrift never truly leaves. A theft that takes not just money or jewelry, but identity, sovereignty, unity, opportunity, any semblance of equality. A theft that takes not just culture, language, and institutions away, but leaves behind its own, which we are now expected to assimilate into, taught to want to weave ourselves into. A theft masquerading as a trade, even though a trade is supposed to offer at least some benefit to both sides, is supposed to be mutual. This was no trade. It was theft that left a deep red stain on not the thief, but those they stole from. Shame becomes ours, and they thrive. I continue with theft because it is el tatuaje de nuestra sociedad. El ladrón destroys la tierra, destroys and brainwashes. We are puppets. Fruit companies? Sure. New political dictators? Sure. More money to put you in debt? Sure. Panama Canal? Sure. This theft is what mutilated thousands of lives in the past, in the present, in the future. This theft is there and will always be there because it seeps through the cracks of treaties and foreign aid. They own you as time ticks with impotence. Tick, 
tock, tick, tock.